Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Dragon Age Veilguard, where uh, I don't know what the issue was, but I just finished re recording part of the stuff where we had to go do the dragon fight where we, we fought with Davrin, did the griffin thing with the gloom howler, and then fought the dragon. And I had to re record that for at least the, the actual video file. I swear everything looks fine. But now I'm terrified that just periodically, like, every five videos is going to be, like, super stuttery and bad. And I, I have it up over here. It's right here. I can, I'm looking at it, and I have it up on purpose because I remember back in the day, like, it would be a big problem to have things, like, stutter. And, like, I'd have to, like, reconstruct all the audio, and, like, it was, it was the worst. So, like, usually it's visible when that's a problem, but, like, I haven't noticed anything. So I'm, like, scared. Why? The only thing I can think of is that for some reason when it does a stuttery thing, it takes up a massive amount of space. And so, like, I'm trying to now watch, like, the gigabytes, like, to see how much they're doing. And I'm like, hmm, I'm so scared. <sighs> okay. It's all, also it's so hot in this sweater, but it's, like, Skyhold sweater. Is Asan just, like, flying around? Oh, you want to... Does he want to talk again? Did I not just talk to him? Oh, he has something, but he has something new he wants to say, I guess. Is Asan? Where? Asan, where are you? He sounds like he's outside, flying around. Which is fine, I just want to see him. It'd be fun. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we're all good. Oh my gosh, he is a woodcarver. I knew it. Oh my gosh, listen, Blackwall was my second choice, and Blackwall was a woodcarver, and it was a good look. It was a good look. This is a sick view, too. Like, he's probably got the best room in the house, honestly. It's a good thing there's no weather, but, like, you know. He's got a really great view. Very open. Probably so that, um, Asan can come in and out much easier. Rook, I was thinking of taking Hassan for a walk. He could use the exercise. Chance to stretch his wings. Mm, you knew it, everyone. Thought you'd like to come along. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> How to train a griffin. Classic cute. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's get to know Davrin a little before things go down. Where is this? Where? Oh, wrong thing, wrong thing, wrong thing. Right. Oh, Asan is. He, hang on, hang on, hang on. He's Asan shows up on the map too. Oh my gosh, the baby. Hello, baby. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you get the way she did that. <laughs> Listen, that is how I pet my sister's dog. Like not here, where the place where I stay, but my parents and like my sisters have three dogs at home. And one of them in particular, actually all three of them, I do this to all of them, I walk up and like, especially the youngest one, he's just so eager all the time and I just go like, I like pat like this. Like not hard, it's just like kind of rattling the brain a little, you know, just like dig, 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 dig. and they, they all, like the, the golden retrievers are just like confused and they're just like, okay. And the like Aussie mix, like the cattle dog mix, he's just like, thank you for the attention. And it's so funny. And the like, the like, oh, she hugged him with the like squish in the face and being like, oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh. That, yeah, that's so cute. That's how I would do it. I'd be like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Anyways, sorry. Sorry, little guy. We're going to go on a walk. How exciting. If I can figure out where to. Out. Oh. Oh, okay. Hang on, guys. I know you all have really important things to say, but I'm. you know what it is? We're going to be like, um... Oh, sick. You can enchant things with powerful... Super powerful things? That's cool. Strength earns master. Oh, you're in my enchantment now, guy. Okay. Is this, does this cost money? My shield gets... Oh, I guess that does kind of make sense. Let's do armor damage, honestly. Cool. Like, just for free? Is this for free? This feels for free, so if it isn't, I'm going to be sad, you know? Interesting. Thank you. I will look into that more. It is nice to get bonuses and whatnot. 
I'm gonna say that um, Harding and ne no, ne uh, Harding and Balara need more time. So in the meantime, we gotta get gotta get to know our new our newest friend before we add more friends. Also, I did while I was editing, I realized that yeah, the only two left are Emric and Tosh. For some reason, I was like, is there another one? And maybe there is. It's just a super secret one, and I just can't think of them right now. But I don't think so. We are. Mm, she won't come out with us. Can I just? Can't I just go out as is? You have to bring two. Fine. We're just going out here. I was like, you could go on a walk with him here, but I guess it would be hard. Like, Asan probably can only, like, fly around the, like, you know in visual range or in like around the buildings and he can't really like stretch his wings to like go off and explore other things and see new things you know wait the lyrium daggers vibrating like a song in a wine glass are those voices oh Striking the crossroads without forethought would be folly. The rebellion controlled it for far too long. Its defenses will be artfully hidden. You will not press. Our forces are cunning and sharp. Fenharel's spite is endless and his spite. trickery not easily overcome. He will have traps in wait. A crossroads in ruin is no good to us. That was Elganon and Gillany. Were we eavesdropping on the past? It makes sense for Solus. His dagger, his enemies, his way of spying on them. Let's hope it doesn't work both ways. As in, like, with the gods? Like, that the gods are eavesdropping or that Solus is eavesdropping? Because Solus is apparently not eavesdropping. We have to tell him everything. Um, that's why. And now this tree is here. Maybe it's, um, like, this wasn't on the map before. Like, the tree's always been here. A tree of echoes. Interesting. I thought we were going to be hearing the last moments of the people here. Wild. So we're unlocking echoes and memories now, too. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It's, it's hard for me to, like bodily show how excited I am because like you can't really see but I'm shoved into a corner the bed is like right here like like up just just past my hand and like the wall is right here and like I hiss it like this and my arms are kind of stuck I just feel a little stuck in here because there are some things that have happened like when Dorian came like if I had the ability to like and I'm also on carpet so I can't like roll out easily um so it's like if I had the ability to like throw my chair back and jump up and down, I would, but I cannot, so I'm trapped here in this mortal vessel in this tiny corner, doing my best with what I have. Hello, I, I think this is the way I need to go. Let's actually see, we might actually need to be going into an area we haven't been to before? Aye. Hmm. Is it straight across? Or is it... <gasps> Regrets. Look for more wolf statues. <gasps> they are keeping track of it. They're keeping track of the memories. Good. Because I was like, have I missed any of the memories? I was so worried. I was very worried. Like, I'm worried about this. It seems like everything's fine. I'm so scared. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna look. Okay, seems good. Oh, we're, yeah, we're returning to Arlathan too for this with him in particular. But anyway, I got to strike memories. The memories where here regrets of the dread wolf. We have the heart of corruption. Probably can't get there yet. Um, the heart of the cards where I can't blight. Regrets. Regrets. Two regrets close to each other over there. Corruption. Okay. This is good. I was worried. I was worried about that. 
Lucanus is maybe not the number one I'd bring along to play with the like, baby griffin, but seeing as how Lucanus actually isn't going to be here anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm gonna make lose it. Oh, okay. Nope, we're good. Okay. I was like, if you've locked up a hundred girl, I'm gonna be upset because oh, I keep reading, but it's hard about that. Lucanus, it's like, if you lose control of Spike, I'll have to put you both down. Why? No hard feelings. Everybody always mean to good. him. But you should know, all the people who ever tried to kill me are dead. You should know. Um. I mean, it's like, I, I don't know, why can't someone's first reaction be like, so how are you feeling? You know, everybody asks why the demon, but nobody ever asks, you know, how the demon doing? How the guy with the demon doing? They're just always pointing knives at him. See, this is why I, I would like to do what, what just happened is like one of the reasons I feel like going back and forth through the crossroads actually makes a lot of sense. Because in an area that you have to revisit a lot, it is good design to like make it change a little bit. Not every time, but like periodically, you know? Fairly regularly. So that way people are like, oh my gosh, we have another. Oh, does. Uh, we want to go look at Morgan who has not done nothing to further the plot? She might have something we need for that us. Oh no, not more. You know I've what? I've anything like this. The whole I think, is in I think it's Arlathan. Is is bad. Like frames. Yeah, I already did that. Why? Why can I still read it? Hi, Morgan. Oro still isn't home. I shouldn't have let him go when he said he'd take the relic deeper into the forest. Deal with it. I have to go after him and I'm taking Gus. Oros and Gus are always inseparable, and Oros always said Gus was the best tracker. He knew Gus will find the trail. Right, well, the old dumpers are in trouble. They could use our help if we can find them. This map is a good start. I forget, I have a shortcut over here. He's like, Ooh, we should go to Arlathan. And it's like, Yeah, all the open space, blah blah blah. But also, who wouldn't want to go to Arlathan? It's Arlathan, though. It is definitely Arlathan. My frames are bad. Ooh, I do have. Well, and I get flamey attacks when, um, dang, I have electricity and fire right now. I get fire when, um, I get fire when I, I kill something on its, um, weak, tart, like weak point. Ow. Just... Not bad for an amateur. Not bad for an amateur. Who are you to say that? He's a Grey Warden. I am assuming he's like at least as old as we are. Like we're probably maybe younger than him. Well, not Lucanus. Not Lucanus is maybe a little older. Lucanus is like early forties, maybe. I don't know. He looks like that late thirties, early forties. Like kind of all blurs together. Um, I picture myself as you know in my mid thirties. Hmm, Darby might be a little young, but he acts older. But I would th that doesn't surprise me from a Grey Warden, you know? Um, I got, like, stuff, like, he gave me, like, precision or something. Uh, Lucanus did. I don't know, something happened during the fight where he, like, gave me an extra ability. Yeah, I don't know why before that we didn't, I didn't get two revives because Lucanus has two I think Tavern's armor is so good he's very very well made <laughs> I guess the sword just has electric damage I am not sure where I'm getting the fire damage unless I'm accidentally triggering the fire like, by killing something on its weak point but like accidentally like or without even knowing, because I think you can only, on the smaller guys, you can only target, like, one, one spot on them, you know? It's not like they have, it's like a dragon that has multiple. I think it was nice that he invited me, unless he wants to tell me that he has to kill me for some reason. Or he's like, I'm honor bound to blah blah blah. Let's get going. I've been thinking. 
Lancet and Remy used special food to train the Griffins. Said it was the fastest way to start a bond. Right. The, uh, uh what do you call it? Turlum? Turlum. That's it. And Ginger wore truffles were the Griffins' favorite treats. I have some truffles. They grow around ruins. We're going to teach Hassan how to find some. Oh, hey. Eh. I. Oh, hey, have I not? Are you something? Oh. Interesting. I have picked up a few truffles. I think this, some of this might be opening up to me. Yeah. This is a new area. Hey, Son, could you go pick up a chest that apparently exists? This looks like it's supposed to be a path, but it's maybe overgrown for a reason and I can't get over there? Hmm. By the end of the game, I'll make sure to explore everything, but I'm not gonna, like, try to push it at this point. Seems like they'll open up areas when they feel like it. Benadol's Tears? We're going inside to search for... ruins? He said near trees, right? How did you end up with the Grey Wardens? Grew up in a Dalish clan. He did! I hear all these stories about things that happened thousands of years ago. The Dalish do love their history. Except I wanted to make history. Didn't fit in. Got bored, so I went looking for adventure. How'd that go over with your clan? Poorly. They felt like I rejected I, them. I could see that. Did you? Yeah, I suppose. Clan life wasn't for me. I had to get away. So then what happened? You're out in the world looking for adventure? Got my ass kicked. Went broke. I couldn't go crawling back to my clan of failure. Doubt they'd take me back. It forced me to figure out what I was good at. Always had a knack for hunting. Okay, that makes sense. The Dalish are known for, I mean, that's how they get by, is hunting. Somebody's got to do it. Um, interesting, though, that, yeah, the Dalish can be very entrenched in the past, as many people can be in this game and in the real world. And they, I think, maybe would spend a lot of time searching for old remnants instead of trying to make history. So, like, he hears these stories and he wants to be like that or do something that would make the history books, you know? So that makes sense. And I can see how a clan, though, some clans would be like, yeah, you need to go out into the world and do what you need to do. And some clans would be like, no, it's safe. It's safer here. and We're supposed to be together. Like, this is the way of things, you know? Field notes of last days. Oh, a page of a bestiary singed. They found us, these things wronged before the veil and wronged still. Their hate grew weapons to fight gods and found fear and flesh. Maybe something that Gillanon made? Their hate grew weapons to fight gods and found fear and flesh. Uh, my miscellaneous category has some stuff in it. And the Grey Wardens have some stuff in it. Oh, oh, this is a new card, too, a Gillanon. Letter from Solus to Gillanon. I have seen your creatures. Some are beautiful, some are horrific, but all are brilliant. I can understand how such incredible achievements could make one feel like a god. Perhaps that explains the terror you have caused and the transformations wrought upon those unable to defend themselves. But you must know that you are not a god. You are a mage, and a title from the Avenirs cannot alter that. If anything, joining their ranks will bind you to their political will. You could make creatures to protect our people from the Avenirs. Why debase yourself and threaten our people by joining them? Of course, I know why. You hope to gain peace with Andril. You would not be the first to sacrifice your morals for love. I knew it, right? Because we read, hopefully that I still included it, but we read that st the Codex entry stuff about Gillanon and Andril, how Gillanon was favored above all by Andril, and I was like, what is that? The, the, and they were roommates, you know? And it's like, uh, oh, history will remember them as best friends, bosom buddies. Yeah, no, they were gay. <laughs> <laughs> they were at the very least it seems like in love right not even just like a, oh make peace with your friend you would not be the first to sacrifice your morals for love Ooh, and i think solace also is going to sacrifice his soul his morals for love yes he will be doing that 
because he's going to get spirits killed in order to probably avenge Mithral. Is is what is what I'm guessing. Is what I'm that's what I'm putting down. Um, I guess it's like you know I love like you would not be the first, sac- first to sacrifice your morals for love. There's like the love of friendship, love potentially like sibling love. What you know what I mean? Like fam- familial love. So there's all different kinds. But uh, I kind of get the vibe that they were potentially lovers. Um, the goddess of the hunt and the goddess who can create monsters and creatures, you know? Um, and this is such an interesting way, like, we just read it, right? Where it's like, Gunan's invited to join the gods because of her talents, right? She was not born to it like them, but she was the first, potentially the first and only one, to be invited into their ranks. Um... And so this is this is Solus giving a, or like giving us inadvertently that story how it actually happened, right? <laughs> Let's see, does she write him back? I don't see anything else from her. Lore for the Grey Wardens from Davin's Journal, naming a griffin. There is one griffin, this little guy. Lancet and Remy haven't given him a na- name yet. They wanted to wait for the griffin's personalities to emerge, and he was still finding his way. But I've spent some time with him, seeing what he can do. I've been watching Lancet put him through his paces in training. He's a little slow in the uptake, but he's fast in the air. He loves to jump right into the fire. There's a courage about him, but purity. I suggested we named him Asan. It's Dalish, roughly translates to arrow. It seems to suit him, and they agreed. So that's official. If I do nothing else in this life, at least I can say I got to name a griffin, right? So it's this whole, like, like his, his desire to make history, right? Like, at least you can be the one who named a griffin. And they don't seem to have... I think it, they would have had a variety of names back in the day because the Great Wardens have always been incredibly diverse. Like, they don't... If you're going to fight the Blight, they don't care where you're from, who you are, you know what I mean, what your ears look like, you know, stuff like that, so... Diverse journal griffins are real. Like every Grey Warden, I've heard about griffins. Tall tales, the stories of legend, the role these animals once played in our history. And like every Grey Warden, I've wondered what they were really like. We've got statues of them all around Weishaupt, but it's not the same thing. Today, I actually met one. The first warden said I was being assigned to a secret project out in the Anderfels. I'd never have imagined it would mean I'd meet real live griffins. Lancet and Remy have gotten used to them, but the shock still hasn't worn off for me. Thirteen of them. Thirteen secret miracles we need to protect at all costs. I still don't understand how they came to be, but somehow I'm part of it all now. I get they want to keep the defense force small so it doesn't draw attention, but, like, griffins in the sky is going to draw attention, and, like, you might want to have more than three people. That's just me. But apparently, if, if only the first warden was aware of them, again, I'm almost wondering if this is so, this stuff is so obvious that it's not actually going to turn out this way, because I'm like, come on, Bioware, like, I mean, you guys are really great at crafting narratives, you know, characters, I think, number one, but, like, you know, it's like, put in a little, make it a little difficult for me, but also it's like, put people in power, you know, like, the, like, it's not gonna be hard to pick out who are the ones that are corrupt or willing to be corrupted, you know? Griffin training. My first week in the area, I keep thinking that I'm sure glad Lance and Remy are in charge of the training. These griffins are a handful. A rolling, screeching, always hungry, flying ball of feathers, and chaos that never stops squawking or pooping. That last one is no small thing. Thirteen griffins all pooping here makes an incredible less. Lancet just shrugs and says, Vicehop could use the fertilizer. Sure, as long as I'm not the one hauling it away. I'm here to guard these animals. I've tagged along on a few hunting runs against Lone Dark Spawn in case things got out of hand. And I admire Lancet and Remy's patience. It's going to be a while before these griffins are the warriors of old we read so much about. And only two trainers for thirteen. You'd think they'd have, like, a trainer assigned to each one, you know? But again, I guess try to keep it from spilling the beans. You know, you got to keep it small. Weishaupt. Joining up with Rook means I won't be going back to Weishaupt anytime soon. I doubt I'd be welcome, not if the first warden caught wind of what I'm doing. I'll miss the old fortress. It's cold, damp, and drafty as a canyon, and so vast it takes months to get your bearings. But it's home to Grey Wardens, and it's the only home I've got. Wandering the massive libraries of books I'll never read, getting bruised and battered while sparring in the training yard, smelling the latrines in the summer, freezing in our bunks in the winter. It's all pretty miserable, yet just as exhilarating. Vicehaupt is over a thousand years old. Its armies have fought and won blights, and its banners have never fallen. It's the beacon in the darkness that keeps evil at bay. Thetis would just be a world of ruins without its protection. Okay, so, foreshadowing. Apparently Vicehaupt's gonna fall. If it's never fallen, hmm. And this is a new blight, and the First Warden's being a dum-dum. So, yeah. Uh, Gloomholler. It's my first week posted at the Griffin area. Whatever stalking Grey Wardens isn't human or dwarf or an elf or anything else I've ever heard of. Whatever this monster is, it's smart enough to target Wardens. It's already killed members of our order, and now our commanders are worried it's going to strike the Airy. We have to stop this thing before it does more damage. I've been told if the Airy's attack protecting the Griffins is my first priority. We can't lose these animals again. If we can draw the Gloomholler out, even if we don't kill it, I'm hoping we'll have a trail to follow. 
Yeah. That didn't work out very well. But also, like, I do think he probably, like, he needs to, like, message it into the to Vice Hop and be like, so I'm, maybe he can be like, I'm going to go hunt down who stole them. Uh, you know, here's a note. These two are dead. I'm going to get them. I'm going to go get the, the babies, you know? Boop, beep, boop. Man, I sure wish I could see him, if only the frames weren't stuck at, like, 30. Ooh, the butterflies, though. Wow, look at that big glowing chest. I'm sure, sure nothing's gonna go wrong there. Or is this... I can't swim. Oh, okay, I can't swim. That's fine. Oh, hello! Yes, hello, Davin. Welcome to your first weird elven magic interaction that doesn't really seem to have a point. Like, why am I breaking things and that's what's giving me a blessing? I don't understand. It's not even time. But I get health, so, like, I'll do it. Level 18 already. Oh, by the way, I hope I included it, but when I went back and was running, I was right right before I got into the dragon, um, and we defeated the dark, or the Kunari, uh, freaking Davran is like, not bad for a morn watch. And I was like, excuse me, you know what I mean? I'm like, the bants, like, you know, like, it's <laughs> the little, little friendly warrior banter. I now can throw shield toss even further. Sick. Let's see. We're not further. Sorry. I can. I think I can charge it up more. I don't know what that's gonna do. Pro hopefully, be more powerful at the very least. You know. Yeah, that's like disti- that's going to be a path eventually, but it's just distinctly blocked right now. I was like, oh wow, look, it, it, aspen trees, and there's definitely gonna be people. We aren't talking much, like, we're just, just kind of wandering around. What are you doing? That's not a truffle, that's a nub. You'll get fleas. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's having fun. Through these. Hers when you scratch him. Aww. Maybe we can speed things up by helping him. Let's search the bushes. Look around for troubles. Well, let's see where the nug goes. Dang it. We're gonna get fleas. Ow! That was a thorn? Keep looking. Uh, thank you, yes, I will. Nug droppings. Look. Don't eat it. The nugs pretty much own Arlithan Forest. As is their right. Nope. Hmm, this is harder than it looks. Did you find something? It's fleas, isn't it? <laughs> what I tell you? Actually, I think it's a truffle. Huh. Maybe the nugs like truffles. Could Asar know that if you follow them, you might find truffles? Are you really that smart, boy? Yes. Seems pretty clever to me. See, he knows. If only you'd be clever enough to listen. He's a baby. Well, you're still getting to know each other. Remember, tell him. Tell him. Two-way street, buddy. <sighs> Remy was probably right. Remember how she said he needed a lighter touch? If I go soft on him, the world would chew him up. Hmm. Let's give you both a chance and see if you can find any more of these. There's the the two different thoughts, right? Where it's like, uh, if I'm if I'm if I'm strict with you, find some nugs, see what happens. If I'm strict with you, so how you'll, did you go you'll from toughen up. Hunter to slayer of monsters. Uncle Eldrin. What? An old elf I knew growing up. When I was a kid, I'd hunt just about anything: rabbits, deer, fox. Eldrin gave that purpose. Taught me the way of three trees. Veer. 
The way of the arrow, way of the bow. Feared. Way of the wood. Dare to doll hmm. something. That sounds noble. Eldrin taught me to hunt the unnatural so the natural can thrive. Be a force for good. Fear Venadol? Besides, it was either that or starve. Monsters paid good coin. So I like that. A Grey Warden? If you were making money on your own. I didn't leave my clan to get rich. Had to prove it was all worth something. I needed a cause. There must be easier causes than fighting dogs born all your life. Darkness is a sparring partner. The greater the shadow you confront, the stronger you are for winning. Till you meet one you can't beat. Haven't yet. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, I guess he's, he's the type to, like, keep pushing himself, right? To, like, keep looking for that next horizon. Not good at staying still. But he did find a home in Vysopt, according to his diary that I'm apparently reading. <laughs> but, you know, and even if it's, like, I don't know, I like that, right? Where he's, like, it sucks, but, like, it's home and, like, there's things there that, like, I love, you know? Like, you can't have everything, but, like, what's there is good, you know? Uh-oh. Well, these people just died. I guess that's nice. You didn't have to turn into a tree. Where are the nugs at, Asan? I like the uh, how, how these like outer filigree embossing elements look like and they're on pillars but it makes the pillars look different like from like the the embossing I don't know it's pretty it's nice it's a nice decor choice what's this this has got to be something eventually like there's the Fenerel statue there's this Gillenon statue or no Gillenon sorry it's just an elk statue but like they've got Fade remnants on them. <gasps> that is a mythol statue. That we have seen in many instances and has been barely confirmed to be a mythol statue. And the one that's just the Ark that looks like it's Gilanons, apparently. And I think Elgarnans must be like the rays of the sun, you know? Um, Mythos just has like a point in the center, maybe like a point on each side. Solus, Solus is his round, I think, right? If we're, if, he, if, 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 if that's his dagger, I don't even know if it's his dagger. I actually don't know if it's his or, or if he, if it's actually technically one of the other gods that he's just using. Cause he had the orb and the orb broke. I do like that the music feels subtly like Inquisition in some places, but also like distinctly its own. It's nice to have continuity in like games soundtracks, honestly. Like it's nice to have similar like strains, you know, or chords that you're like, yes. You know, Assassin's Creed does that a lot. Um, and you can almost always call, oh, Halo does it too, right? Um, you can almost always know exactly what you're hearing. You're like, oh, hello, or oh, Assassin's Creed, you know. This is just beautiful. The only thing that would make a photo mode better is if you could, like, like, this photo mode better is if you could, um, like, change your facial expression. Like, you could have, like, a default happy one or something, but, like, I, or, like, I was just trying to get a photo, like, at one point, it turns out her face was in the middle of doing, like, a, you know, thing. So it would be nice um, to, like, be able to change, or, like, a posture or something. Horizon Zero Dawn does that, and it's really, it's nice. I like it. I like this one. I've been trying to frame this for a while. Oh, but we maybe I have to go further out to get the wolf. Or further in to get the wolf out entirely because it's not symmetrical with the wolf in there. I guess you could just do it like this. Like the obviously the ruin in the back is not symmetrical either. Anyway, none of this is a big deal. I just like it. <laughs> I 
told my friend last night that, uh, Okay, I got it. <laughs> I was like, I feel like I'm doing a scrapbook. Oh, a nug. Hello. Alright, show me the money. Nope. There. I think his son's got something. Why don't you I've... take a look? He's got a lot of friends is what he's got. It's a nug gathering. I don't want to disturb. He was having a good time. He's making friends. I'll be damned. Follow the nugs. Like Always. I said, he's a clever one. Might Always make a advice. tracker out of you yet. Hungry? <sighs> what? It's Ginger Ward. <laughs> Eat it. Remember, light touch. I mean, mmm, it's dessert fit for a prince. <laughs> See? Oh my goodness. Hmm. Like, how do we want to, like, maybe influence his stuff with the son? Like, I get it. Like, you do want to, like, you don't want to just, like, coddle them, right? Because then they'll, they'll never, they'll never make it. Like, the whole point of being, like, versus, like, a parent is that, like, you basically as soon as the kid pops into the world like your 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 whole job is to make them be able to be independent but fully autonomous adults you know what i mean like every day is a step further away from you you know what i mean like i, I i'm not saying it very well but like just from like what i've read and stuff or it's just uh it just seems like that right like it's a, it's a letting go every day of like you know letting them be their own person Letting them walk their own path, but just giving them the tools that they can to do the best they can, you know. Regardless of if they go off the rails, like you know, you just you just gotta hope you did your best, you know. We'll do this one, I think. I think it'd, it'd be good to start like the like you have to trust each other, you know. He'll be fine. He just has a strong spirit. Let him grow into it. I like that. I not have time for that. I like that. With Lancet and Remy gone, if something happens to me. He'll have to stand on his own. So don't let anything happen to you. I'm a Grey Warden. Deaths around every corner. I'm a Mourn Watch. Not that I don't enjoy punching it squarely in the face. Look at that face! Yeah! I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm Mourn Watch. Death is my constant companion. You know what I mean? Like, you just do your best. I like that confidence. That's how you win. <laughs> it's not all about winning. Sometimes I enjoy the pursuit too. Ah, oh. uh, the thrill of the chase. <laughs> so I was like, what? <laughs> okay, boy. That's enough for one day. But he's having fun. He's a he overeats, and you'll find out how fun Griffin puke is. Eh. Never Hassan, mind. You heard him. <laughs> Let's go. I'm like, sorry, I had your side, bud, but not anymore. Don't take me away. I saw a chest back there that I'd like to pick up. I do feel like there was less talking. Okay, good. Lucanus is like, oh, am I interrupting anything? Look, there is some, this is a Gillen on one. There is something going on in here. In these places. Beyond the veil. A map in hand, unused to paper. The terror was trembling and palpable. A map? In a hand unused to paper. Their terror was trembling and palpable. Land as empty as this new void in us that ceases the spirit and makes us suddenly meet. Ooh. I was gonna say, it looks like, it sounds like a spirit. Land as empty as this new void in us that ceases the spirit and makes us suddenly meet. I wonder if, my friend, I swear somewhere I read that Solus was asked to come over by Mythal, but I think... My friend said that she read, and these are all like codex entries, not just like fan theories, but like code, like a codex entry once that implied strongly that he was pulled over and unmade from what he was, you know? And so, again, and I could also see why he think Gillenon is like kind of a monster in a way, even though he called her creations brilliant. I, I like, to unmake something and make it something else is, uh, is a terrifying thing, you know? Interesting.
Ginger what truffles? I don't know why a half eagle, half lion likes truffles, but they have little paws. Uh, but griffins can't resist them. Asan's brothers and sisters all went wild for them, and now Asan is carrying on the family tradition. I asked Harding what's so special about them. She didn't know, so we did what any good major alchemist does. We both tried to nibble. The taste of ginger was overwhelming. It's too much, yet Asan gulps them down. I guess it's like broccoli. Some people love it, but those with working taste buds avoid it. Emery... Emmerich isn't here. Emmerich muttered something about brewing it as a tea to enhance any magical properties, but I'm not in a hurry. As long as this ginger wart keeps us unhappy, I won't question the reasons why. Ah, uh, that's a bit of it. That's a that's actually a pretty big oversight, honestly. My younger days. Hunting for trouble. Why am I reading Davern's journal also? Like, why is this a thing that I get to have? Hunting for truffles turned out to be a chance to get to know Rook better. It also got me thinking about my younger days and how I haven't spoken to my clan in a long time. They didn't understand why I wanted something more than the traditional Dalish life. I guess I was stubborn and bullheaded and figured I'd go show them as I ventured off to find my fortune. Since then, I've kept my distance. That's on me. Maybe I've been feeling guilty. I don't know. But I do know I miss Uncle Eldrin. Talking about him with Rook got me thinking about my days as a kid in the Arlathan Forest. So he did live in Arlathan Forest for a while. Racing Aravels through the forest, following hidden Dalish trails and secret waterfalls. It all gave me a taste for adventure I never outgrew. Okay, cool. I mean, if he grew up in Arlathan, then he's a, a, supposed to be a rare type of Dalish. Like, they don't... And maybe that, that would explain it. If, if it was one of the reclusive Arlathan Dalish clans, then it would explain why they... It's like, why do you want to leave? Like, this is, this is where we belong. You know what I mean? Like, and this is our place to protect. Hello? Griffin extinction. I've been going through the Great Warden histories on the Griffin. Something isn't adding up. They're part of our order for centuries, and then one day they aren't. There's vague talk about blights taking their toll, how eggs weren't hatching, and their numbers dwindled, but they'd already survived earlier blights without trouble, and why would eggs stop hatching? Which means something happened, but I can't find any details. Did they get sick? Was there some sort of disease? More than a few records around that time are missing, and I can't find anything about how many eggs hatched, which I'm sure they were meticulous about. It's a missing piece in all this I need to track down. I can't, again, I can't, it's been so long since I read that book, I can't remember if they bring it up. I think they also assumed, like, disease, like there was some sort of disease going on or something. But, yeah, I don't know. I will find out, I suppose. Grey Warden stuff? Oh, nice! <laughs> oh. Mine's a glade. Oh, I see. That's the heavy weapon. I was like, what? I don't want to switch it out, even though I'm not using, um... <gasps> Wielded by the Hill Tribes of the Avar! This a this axe is etched with the symbols of their gods. I was hoping we'd see more of the Avar. I really enjoyed the Jaws of Akan DLC, and the Avar are a fascinating people with a really interesting culture. But a glaive is actually my favorite weapon of all time. So... I'll just keep it because I apparently can just keep it in my back pocket. <laughs> I wonder. Those those have to be like shrines. Those statues. Wrong button. Yes, I saw it. I think if I go into the screen and like look at it when it tells me to and it's like hit this button and you can look at it, then I shouldn't have to go in and look at it here either. Mm -mm. When will I get more armor? It just opened up this fast travel area to a wall. Again, this now this is even more obvious that, you know what I mean? It's like, just put up something on the map so I don't get confused about where I can and cannot go. I do want to do these faction things, but I do want to get more of the Veil Guard, especially if we're going to be having issues where Codex entries act like we have companions that we don't have yet. And this means that, but first I have to go, you know, talk. And I'm, I'm going to fast travel through this one, just back to the lighthouse. I talk to Ballara and Hardy really quick, and I will go do Emmerich first once once we get those because I want to go see my home, my place, you know. Whoa! What else? It's another secret your order's been keeping. What does that mean? Wardens act like the heroes of Dedas. 
but they hide just as many shadows as they find. And your crows are saints? No, but we don't pretend to be. We're honest about our work. Don't bad talk the wardens! <laughs> but I get it, right? Yeah. And I think it's one of those things where, like, nobody oversights the Grey Wardens, and that's be they have to be. They have to be able to do what they need to do during a blight, but, like, I guess, like, there is, like, you know, basically, like, societal pressure. Like, no warden who's an actual warden is gonna, like, refuse to fight the blight just because some uh, some politicking, you know what I mean? Like, that warden should just be consigned to the deep roads at that point if they're gonna do that. So, they're not gonna stop doing what they do. But... Still, it's one of those things that does make people start to question. It's like the heroes of old. No, no, there's no denying that they have been heroes, but there's no denying that they've probably done some terrible things also, you know? But they have 100% done some terrible things. Okay, Ballara, what's your lead on getting us a fade expert for the team? Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Myrna, Vorgoth, what's more of the Morn Watch doing here? I've been writing to a senior fade expert. Turns out he's a watcher like you, but I needed help tracking him down. You could have just asked me. We came. Ask me. You've done well since we last met at the Necropolis, Rook. Back straight. You wouldn't believe what I've seen <laughs> since I left the Watchers. No one truly leaves the Watchers. As a room writer, yay! I haven't. A home in life, a birth in death. A house of many mansions. So Ballara's been in touch Ooh. with one of our own. I houses. like that. Yes. Do you know Professor Emmerich Volkarin? I've heard of him around the necropolis. Never met. The professor specializes in the fade and spirits, a truly powerful psychagogue. He's currently uh, investigating <laughs> the disturbance in the shrouded halls. Seek him there. Ooh, this is so fun. This is going to be me because, no, I think this, both my Inquisitor and Stone, my Rook, are, um, they enjoyed the lives they had before this, you know, before this got consumed them. And honestly, she's just taking a break from Morn Watch, but not even really. She's just stepped away from, like, the physical area of it because of the, the drama, you know, but it's like, she was always planning on going back, you know? Um, and it always, it, it calls to her, like, again, I, I chose Falandin for a reason. Like, the, 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 the edge that they walk between life and death is something that appeals to her greatly um, as, a, as a concept, right? She's kind of, her whole life, she's been drawn to that. Mm, let's, yeah. The place we were forbidden to enter as novices. Those shrouded halls? You're long past being a novice. Yeah, but... Rook, prepare well. Listen, you... Agreed. ...are cool. The shrouded halls have lately been... ...restless. Yeah, can we... Who's he? Like, what? You're just gonna... He's obviously a spirit of some sort. And, like, this is where we get those... Navarra's always been a bit of an oddball compared to the other Chantry countries. Um, where... The most Chantry, like the, 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 the most Chantry, Andrastian, most Andrastian influenced countries do their thing of burning the dead, right? Um, I think it's partly because Andraste was burned at a stake, you know, and, and was burned to ashes and blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's like, you know, symbolic of that. But also, um, it's so that the dead do not rise again because they have a fear of spirits inhabiting corpses, right? So they burn their dead um, and put them in like mausoleums and stuff or something. But like, and but, I mean, there are burials too, but like, you know. Um, but Navarra has always been a bit odd and I don't know if it's ever explained why. They have a giant necropolis, a city of the undead um, that when you are, when you die, you are put in this, I mean, it's, it's, it's an actual city and you're put in there like your corpse is put in there and then you are inhabited with like the the necromancers they were called mortalitasi back in the day and i don't know if they're going to bring up mortalitasi in this one um i think mortalitasi was a cool name um i don't know if that's more of like a priestly thing and the Mornwatch watch is more scholar and like uh 
arms type, you know, like it, like military unit. Um, but yeah, they guard the dead that they have that are actually just walking around. They 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 call spirits to inhabit the corpses of those who have died, and then there's like supposed to be like sound. I think like you're supposed to like talk to the dead, like you know, there's a whole thing. Um, and it's that it's always been really interesting that like it's surprising to me that Navarra got a pass for that and didn't get like an exalted march done on it um, because that's some messing with magic-y stuff that I don't think they'd be okay with you know that that Chantry in general wouldn't be okay with and you have to have necromancer like mages that aren't necessarily in a circle you know which is how Andrastianism prefers to have their mages is locked up in towers so anyway Blah, blah, blah. Very cool stuff. I'm very excited. I'm actually going to get my codex entries out and I'm going to look up Navarra stuff. Just to get my, my memory refreshed. They're also famed for being dragon hunters. The royal line. So I put the word out for dragon hunters and I've heard back about someone who might work. It's a woman named Tosh from a group of Ravani treasure hunters called the Lords of Fortune. I'm so excited to go to Ravane! promising. I'm excited to go to Ravane! An agent for the Lords said that Tosh is working on a mission for them along the Ravane coast. If we help her, she'll be free to join us and fight any blighted dragons the gods throw our way. Woo! She's gonna be cool. What do you know about what's going on in Ravane right now? Not much more than you do. Varric and I never went there while hunting Solas. Interesting. The Kunari were on pretty good terms with Ravane, but that was before the Antom military broke away from the rest of the Kuhn. I wouldn't be surprised if the Antom invaded Ravane like they did Treviso and Eastern Tevinter. All right. Guess we'll be ready. I hope someone can. We don't want to fight another dragon without help. Time to find out if the crossroads can get us to an Alluvian in that area. We'll head out whenever you're ready. Oh, but yeah, the spirit guy. I was thinking, I was like, that's probably what he is. He's some sort of, like, manifested spirit. But there's got to be, like, specific ones, you know? Almost, like, advisorial types. But that was, it was interesting, too, to get that uh, jab by the, from the Grey Warden, where it's like, yeah, ne you necromantic, you know, heathen or something. And it was like, Ugh! you know? But, uh, interesting stuff. Very cool. I think I will go ahead, though, and call this one here. So, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. I'm going to cut away now and say thank you to my patrons. Actually, as promised before in the last video, we're going to do codex entries really quick before I say thank you to Patreon. So, queue up two codex entries. The Kunari. Is it? This, this, I point at it, but you can't see me pointing. Um... The Canari card here, right? The guy, he's got beautiful long hair and the gold and, like, tattoos, you know? Uh, it's actually Vitar, technically. It's a poison armor that they wear that if anybody else touches, though, it'll kill you instantly. But the Canari can wear it for some reason. I wonder why. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, that picture, but picture a woman instead. Tall, beefy woman, blonde, like, white flowing hair with golden. I was so excited. I was like, oh, my gosh, when I played Inquisition, I saw that tarot card. And I picked it, and I was like, I'm going to be a gonna have white flowing hair and gold tattoos. It's going to be beautiful and, like, gray skin, you know, and horns. It's going to be so cool. Alas. Alas. Did not happen that way, but, you know, we live. <laughs> now I've made one, um, so it's good. <laughs> Uh, the people of the Kuhn are, perhaps, the least understood group in Thetis. The Kunari Wars were brutal, but so was the Chantry Schism. Yeah, four exalted marches. My mouth actually hurts from all the talking I've been doing. Um, I am at almost an hour of recording this. I think I'm going to be putting them in front of different episodes, like a couple at a time, but I'm still, my mouth hurts. Um... So was the fall of the Imperium. Some of this misunderstanding is an accident of nature. The race we call Kunari are formidable. Nature has given them fierce horns and strange eyes, and the ignorant look on them and see monsters. Some is an accident of language. Few among the Kuhn's people speak the common tongue, and fewer speak it well. In a culture that strives for mastery to have only a passable degree of skill is humiliating indeed, so they often keep quiet out of foreigners, out of shame. But much of it is a result of the- is this grounded in TV? No, okay. I was like, I didn't think Genitivi got to interact with Kunari much. 
Um, blah, blah, blah. But much of it is a result of the culture itself. The Kunari view their whole society as a single creature, a living entity whose health and well-being is the responsibility of all. Each individual is only a tiny part of the whole, a drop of blood in its vein, important not for itself, but for what it is to the whole creature. Because of this, Kunari most, the Kunari most outsiders meet and belong to the army, which the Kun regards as if it were the physical body, arms, legs, eyes, and ears, the things a creature needs in order to interact with the world. One cannot get to know a person solely by studying his hand or his foot, and so one cannot truly meet the Kunari until one has visited their cities. This is where their mind and soul dwell. In Saharan and Parvolan, one can truly see the Kunari in their entirety. There, the unification of the Kunari into a single being is most evident. Workers, whom the Kun calls the mind, produce everything the Kunari require. The soul, the priesthood, seeks a greater understanding of the self, the world, and exhorts the body and the mind to continually strive for perfection. The body serves as the go-between for the mind, the soul, and the world. Everyone and everything has a place, decided by the Kun, in which they work for the good of the whole. It is a life of certainty, of equality, if not individuality. In the writings of a seer of Kantar. Um, this almost reminds me of like the three states or whatever from like medieval times, like pre uh, Black Plague, Black Death, whatever. Um, the Great Pestilence, I think is what it was called at the time, where it was like nobility, priests, and worker, like the common people, right? And all three were supposed to work in tandem for the good of the country or whatever. Especially like Western, you know, Western Europe. Um, I think was pretty big into it. Um, I don't think I don't know. If it, I don't think it probably different. Something similar probably happened in other places. I think. I mean, I don't know much about India in general, but they do have a caste system there, um, or they did. It's technically illegal now, but yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, like nobles were supposed to be. Or I guess it was kind of like knights. Like there was. Yeah. Right. It was priesthood yeah the nobility were like the people the the like supposed to be the protectors right they were supposed to protect the priesthood and the common people and in return the common people would provide for the nobility knights the protectors um and the priests the priesthood essentially the the religious branch would pray for the salvation of the souls of both the work like the common people and the nobility knights um, and in return, also for the prayers of the, they, the people would provide for the, um, like the common people would provide for the priesthood in return for the safety of their souls, and they would provide for the nobility in return for the safety of their persons, right? Uh, yeah, that went, that kind of went tits up during the Black Death, so... It was interesting. It was kind of starting to go anyway. There was like there was the rise of the middle class, the merchant class, essentially that started happening, um, and that started throwing things out of whack because um, they weren't they were artisans kind of, or they were like traders, you know, like like trading caravans and stuff. And so they weren't like the common people. They didn't provide necessarily like the fruits of their labor, um, and they didn't protect anybody per se. And they obviously didn't pray for anybody, but they made buku bucks, you know? And so that was starting to be a thing. And then the Black Death happened and blah, blah, blah. Interesting things happened. Tevinter Society. To those outside of the Tevinter Imperium, it is easy to imagine a society filled with mages and elven slaves and little elves. In truth, there are three different Tevinters, each of them a world completely separated from the others. There are the mages, the land's nobility, completely obsessed with competing for supremacy with each other, almost to the exclusion of paying any heed to the nation's enemies, such as the Kunari. The well-breed Altus sneer at the Latins, who in turn sneer at the Praetari. They vie for dominance in the Magisterium, where factions shift and flow on a daily basis with deadly consequences, requiring every family to put on a veneer of perfect citizenship or face scandal and censure. Then there are the so-called soparati, the sleepers. These are the non-magical citizens who vastly outnumber the mages, yet are beholden to their whims. Many are resentful of the status, plotting in secret, even as they secretly hope their children will possess magical talent and enticing lure, since the talent could conceivably show up in anybody, even a slave. It would be easy to forget that Tevinter possesses a massive class of publicans, the civil servants and leaders of the legionnaires. It has an enormous merchant class, enough teeming poor to drown any other nation in Thetis, and the shadowy thieves called the Prey Sumptar, who are practically treated with respect. I don't remember that one. And then there are the slaves. One would think they at least see each other as equals, but it is not so. The divide between the freed liberati, those who act as personal servants to the magistrators, to the magisters, those who work on farms and factories, and the service publicus, who do all the tasks proper citizens will not. It is all but insurmountable. But perhaps in emulation of those who own them, imperial slaves will connive and scheme to try anyhow. Outsiders might see this as futile, but to Deventer citizens, their nation's social classes are the most mutable and rewarding of merit in all of Thetis. Interesting from Brother Jenna TV. 
Yeah, I mean, I've seen that. I, I've read about that, too, with, like, servants in, like, stories and in, like, histories and stuff, where sometimes the servants are the worst ones to each other. Like, as soon as you get um, a scrap of power, you know, and a scrap of, like, you know, got, you know, if you got mine, like, they will lord that over. I think um, there were even, like like slave overseers who kind of did that too right where the second they were given a little bit of power they wanted to differentiate they desperately as as slaves or as servants or dentured servants or whatever they desperately wanted to differentiate themselves from where they had just been and where they did not want to be and so by doing that like they became you know cruel and almost worse than the than than, than sometimes not obviously not always um but in some cases became treated the people beneath them that they saw beneath them as worse than like even the owners or the uh, was it the boss or whatever you know um depending on what kind of you know, talk about slavery or indentured servitude you know or just regular servant stuff um but yeah and yeah, it, it's a survival thing like it's it's terrible to read about but like you know and it doesn't doesn't negate their suffering or anybody else's suffering but it, it's a survival tactic to do what you need to do to try to just make it in the world and try to make it a little better you know what i mean like for yourself you know and i you can't really fault anybody for that but um for that desire but you can definitely be like but maybe don't <laughs> do that you know all right really quick i want to say thank you to my patrons to all my patrons including my acorn tier patrons thank you so much fane for your support i very much appreciate it and i want to give an extra special shout out to my sapling tier patrons reese galito thank you so much and sebastian james thank you so much i appreciate your guys' support uh, and i want to give an extra super special shout out to my forest tier patrons who have gone above and beyond in their support of me and the channel and who I truly, honestly cannot thank enough. So thank you, Christopher, so much for your support. And thank you so much, Nightshade, for your support. I appreciate you both very much. And thank you all again for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.